a suitcase that can only mean one thing. I'm traveling. Earlier this year, my good friend Sally McRae ran to an incredible second place finish at the Sean O'Brien 50 miler. Being a Montreal Cup race, the top three men and women at Sean O'Brien were guaranteed entry into one of the most prestigious and oldest 100 mile races in the world, Western States. Sally asked our SoCal run crew to pace and crew her during the event, and without hesitation, we all agreed to the task. This film is to show you what it's like crewing states. Southwest. Hi, Dave Daly. Sally McRae. Billy Yang. Hey! You guys gonna kiss? <laughs> it's beautiful here. Beautiful, beautiful lake. But we've got the whole crew together. These are our paddy wagons. Save those legs, Sally. She's running. Western States! Because she's running. Western States! Because she's running. Western States! <laughs> <running. laughs> <'Cause she's running. laughs> <Western Western States! laughs> Welcome to Squaw. See you in Squaw. We're here. Hey, shut up, Dave! I'm in the middle of vlogging! Oh, yeah, yeah. I did that. So we got the squad, we're just gonna grab some food, uh, maybe some pizza, but it's beautiful here. We can't complain, we came right at the right time as the sun is setting. <laughs> Chris Vargo, aka the underscore Vargo, aka the speeding ticket. With full bellies and weary eyes, we checked into our hotel and fought over which bed we were gonna sleep in. We needed to get our rest. Friday was gonna be a big day. Good morning. It is uh, the morning of Friday, the day before the Western States 100. We are gathering early. It's 6.30 in the morning. We're going to go for a run. We're actually going to run the first section of the Western States course while people are still waking up and getting ready before check-in. Uh, so it's myself, Colin, Dave, and Billy. Should be fun. Let's do this. mile and a half up, it's called the escarpment, and it is steep. This is the first three and a half miles of Western. What a way to start. We're about three and a half miles in, already about 2,800 feet of gain. We're power hiking and running a little bit. The elite men and women will run this whole thing. That is impressive. These are the athletes that inspire me to push for 100 miles non-stop and finish the original 100 mile race. Welcome to Squaw. done with our mileage we're gonna cross the start line to the Western States 100 here in a second you'll see uh, all the booths set up and stuff for the race now that we were done with our morning exploration run it was time to check Sally in get her bib get her swag bag get all of her goods and also get ready for the 6k uphill challenge which Chris Vargo was going to run let's go Vargo come on pick it up Vargo come on buddy three and a half miles let's go the 6K uphill challenge. It's a 6K, it's basically the same route that we did. We just run straight up the mountain. We'll see if Chris wins. We just picked up the pacer bibs. So these bibs are for uh, Colin Cooley and Dave Daly as they pace Sally McRae. There's no uh, crew member bibs. We just get to eat snacks in the van the whole time. Brunch by Sally McRae. She might be running 100 miles tomorrow, but it doesn't mean that she doesn't have time to make us an amazing breakfast. This is a full on, full on buffet of uh, breakfast. Glory. Um, um, oh, was awesome. Chris, tell us the results of the uphill challenge. I won. Yeah, you did. Yeah, Chris Margo. Yeah. Sick fade, bro. Good job, man. Good job. 
Do you like creamy? Ice cream, right? Yeah. Now I'm doing it later. Yeah. Yeah. Is it cool? Yeah. Ice. Go. Let's go. go. Drinks. Uh, that's for uh, chain tights and shoes. <laughs> yes. Like, Good job, Dave. My right heel, I tore a big chunk out of it. It's pretty tender still. Mm, uh, sure. Matt, no. Matt. We are going to the pre-race meeting. And uh, we're gonna hear about the race before the race. And <laughs> <laughs> nailing it. We're headed uh, to the Squaw Valley Convention Center. This is where we find out all about Western States, the race, and what Sally needs to know before she runs 100 miles tomorrow. At one point during the meeting, past president and Western States board member John Mettinger brings up the top 10 potential male winners and top 10 potential female winners. Some of the best names in ultra running were brought up on stage, including a little surprise. Go for it, go. You just won prom. <laughs> After the meeting, Sally and her Nike teammates Ryan Galfi and Alex Varner, who were also running Western States, got together to do a quick Nike photo shoot before our team had our final pre-race meeting. Crew okay, meeting for Sally McRae. The race is tomorrow. Well, that's it for the for the day. Tomorrow is Western States 100. We are all getting ready to go to bed. Chris is ready. Colin is snacking. Sally's got her uh, piles of gear here. She's she's ready to go. She's all packed up, ready to race. We're all gonna go hit the hay. We're gonna get some rest, and uh, we're gonna wake up bright and early and help get Sally to that finish line. It's gonna be an awesome day. Let's do it. Yeah. <laughs> On the other side of this door. Billy is filming Sally. I'm so tempted to open the door, but it's all a secret. It's a secret. <laughs> I should kill you. This is just an extra battery for my headlamp. You ready for tomorrow, Sally? I'm so ready. You look so stoked. I'm so ready. What's your stoke level now? What's my stoke level? Yeah. 10. 10, 10. That's great, because it's on a scale of one to five. <laughs> Seriously stoked. It's one more hours away. All right, well, Sally has already taken off. We're just packing up the condo now. We're getting all of our gear for her and ourselves ready. We're packing out. It's time to go to aid station. Uh, I, don't, I think it's like four or five on the actual course, but it's Robinson Flat, which is the first time we'll get a chance to see her, which is mile 30. And uh, it's like a three hour drive away. So we gotta get rolling. One of the challenges of crewing at Western States is that you're gonna have to drive a lot and you really need to make sure that you get to the aid stations before your runner dies. Robinson Flat was a good three hours away and with Sally having run nearly 30 miles, we had no idea how she was faring.
number. Good job. Call it out. Looking great. 37, thank you. You're exactly one minute behind the next female in front of you. It was at exactly this point that I realized as crew chief, I need both my hands for the entire day. What you're gonna see is a lot of before and afters. Not much during. Deal with it. We're set up through the aid station left hand side, around the corner. So Sally just came through Robinson Flat. Uh, how do you think she looked, Colin? She looked pretty strong. She looked happy. She uh, didn't seem like she had any issues as far as like uh, you know muscle or heat or nutrition. So she just needs to be hydrated and stay strong. Dave, what do you think? Uh, same assessment. She looked great, <laughs> happy. Couldn't believe that it was already mile 30. Ethan, what do you think? Same thing. So Sally ripped through Robinson Flat without really any problems. She was taking it easy up to that point, but had another 25 miles before we would see her again at Michigan Bluff. We drove for a couple more hours, grabbed the Michigan Bluff shuttle down to the aid station, and waited for Sally. All right, so we just got to Michigan Bluff. Uh, it's just after some huge climbs in the course, so we're hoping to see Sally in pretty good shape. It includes Devil's Thumb, which is a notorious climb. Hopefully she's in pretty good shape. She's looking great at Robinson Flat, like smiles, just look awesome. We got all of our stuff set up, ready to see her. Shine bright like a diamond. Well done, buddy. Have fun. Great job, man. Looking good, man. How you feel, feel good? Great. Have fun, dude, have fun. You guys look great. <laughs> you got him, man. We'll see you at Forest Hill, man. At this point, a lot of our friends and elites had already rolled through the aid station, so we were getting a little concerned. The more time passed, the more concerned that we got. Then, we heard Sally's name called across the loudspeaker. Nice job. Nice job, nice job. right here. Follow me this way. I'm gonna ice you up here. Let's give you some cold water. How you doing? How you doing? Did you really? Okay, we'll just take some time. No. Yep. 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 You're gonna keep this. Or you wanna get rid of it? Get some water in you, Sally. Get water. All right. So we ended up leaving um, Michigan Bluff. In a hurry, she ran through uh, with some serious knee pain. Um, I think it has something to do with a lot of the downhills uh, and just probably trying to bomb them. Um, so we're gonna fix her up at Forest Hill, which is where we're at now, which is just about five and a half miles beyond where we just saw her. So we had to race here. And uh, we're gonna go meet her a little bit further out and make sure that she gets taken care of, gets ice, gets all the necessities, and then we're gonna tape up her knee and let her continue on. She is in great spirits. Like, it doesn't matter if she's not feeling good or her, or her knee is bugging her. She's all positive energy, it's awesome, awesome. She's got this, she's got this. Before we knew it, Sally rolled in. She was in a lot of pain, not feeling great, but we knew what we had to do. And she gets to pick up her first pacer. Her knee is looking a little bit better, we got it taped up, uh, indie car style, so it was good. We had her in, her in and out really quickly. She's actually feeling really good. Calories on point, liquids on point, um, so we're gonna follow her to we don't actually get to see her for about 18 more miles. We're going to go to a aid station called Green Gate, which has this beautiful river crossing down by Rocky Chucky. And then uh, we're going to go see if we can run into her there. She's now being paced by Dave Daly. So things are going to get either really funny or really depressing. The next aid station where we would see Sally is called Green Gate. It's a good 17 miles from the Forest Hill aid station, and we knew that Sally would be taking her time with the bum knee, the fact the sun was setting, and it was going to be dark any moment. At this point, we didn't know what to expect. 80 miles into a race, anything can happen. So we knew our only job was to get to Green Gate and wait for Sally to arrive. Huh? Okay. With a good hour before we expected Sally to arrive, Colin and I set up our aid station with anything that Sally might need when she runs through. As Colin got ready to take over pacing duties from Dave, and I headed down towards the Rucky Chucky River crossing, the unexpected happened. Uh, okay, so we we got to Green Gate aid station, and the the idea was to get to Green Gate an hour ahead of Sally, go down to Rucky Chucky, which is uh, a big water crossing. Uh, so we had miles to get to her, and we thought we had over an hour of time to get to her. Sally comes ripping up with Dave, uh, an hour ahead of schedule. She's killing it right now, Dave. What, how was Sally? Like, describe Strong. her. Getting, it's getting stronger. I would not want to be number nine right now. Oh my God. So she's in 10th, 11th yeah, at this 10th. point? At this pace, 
Uh, she's just going to be knocking off runners left and right. This is unbelievable. Uh, such a turn of events. This is fantastic. All right, so here's an update. We basically had to like blow through uh, Green Gate. We wanted to meet them at Highway 49 crossing, which is this crossing that we're on Highway 49 and they run across it. We wanted to make sure that Sally knew her splits because she is flying right now. There's girls right on her tail. There's girls like just ahead of her, but she's also got girls on her, on her heels, just nipping at her heels. This is the most exciting uh, moment right now. So we're gonna basically drive to the finish line and we get to run a mile back uh, to meet her and we get to run her in. This is gonna be the most exciting finish uh, I've ever experienced. This is exciting. Sally had passed a staggering 46 runners and was currently running in 10th female. It was time to bring her in to the finish. Just got to place her high school. And uh, we, circled this way, right? we are heading out actually like back right out right of the course because we get to run the last mile with Sally. And we are stoked, We're super excited, it's gonna be awesome. We headed out to Roby Point to run with Sally for her final mile. Destroyed from her incredible 50 mile push, if she could hold 10th female overall, she would automatically be invited back to run Western in 2015. Just one last mile. Yep. Take off her bib. I mean, her uh, pack now. She needs her. Yep, sugar. I got a light for her. Just let it go. Just let it drop. Let it drop. Just let it drop. I'll pick it up. Let it drop. Good, 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 good. This is it, Sally. Track right ahead. That's the track. That is it. Yes! Sally McCray! Right there, no, to the right. Follow, follow, straight, nice. This is your moment, girl. Go right here, we'll go. Take a right at the track. Down here, yep. Go Sally. Go Sally. Great job, girl. Thanks, guys.
One of the most epic moments of trail running is the removal of the shoes. You really want to see this. You know what's you, what was super awesome though? Is I did not change my shoes once. Anything bad? No. Just nice and moist. Yeah, that's I think this is a blister too.